So far in the 2023 tennis season, Norwegian tennis star Kasper Ruud has only played one tournament in which he has won more than one match, suffered several losses to players ranked upwards of 100 spots lower than him, and has earned only the 20th most points on the tour this year despite being currently ranked number 3 in the world. I've made fun of Rude multiple times on the channel for being extremely overrated as well as for being a 250 vulture, so I figured it's about time I make a full video about him, and lo and behold, he has been in awful form as of late. So without further ado, let's dive into the downfall of Casper Rude. At the start of 2023, Rude was coming off easily the best season of his career. He went 51-22 won three 250s all on clay, reached a career high of number two in the world, and made the finals of Roland Garros, US Open, Miami Masters, and the ATP Finals. Despite what seems like a very impressive season on paper, several questions were raised throughout the season about Kasper Ruud's results. His only titles came in low-level tournaments on his best surface, in which he mostly faced players ranked outside the top 40. He had incredibly easy draws in Roland Garros and the US Open that helped him reach the finals of both tournaments and he only managed to win one total set across the four big finals he played in. Across 2022, Rude also looked generally unimpressive against fellow top 5 opponents, and frequently failed to even take one set. This was all fine back when he was still climbing the ranks outside the top 10, but now all eyes would be on the Norwegian, and 2023 was the year for him to prove he belonged at tennis's mountaintop. And so, after participating in the United Cup, Rude officially began his campaign in Auckland, New Zealand, where he lost in the second round to Laz Jarrett. But it's okay, the Aussie Open was up next, and he might as well shake off the rust in a meaningless tournament so it doesn't happen in a Grand Slam. Ooh boy. So, Rude lost in the second round in four sets to Jensen Brixby, and frankly, watching the match, it was clear Rude's form had fallen off a cliff. Thankfully for him though, he didn't lose any points despite his poor finish, meaning he would still be able to retain his high ranking. Next up was Acapulco, where Norwegian Fabio Fognini once again lost in the second round, this time to 125th ranked Taro Daniel. Rude blew a 3-0 lead in the first set, and squandered two match points in the third to crash out of this year's Mexican Open. Coming into the Sunshine Double, Rude was 2-3 and, and had looked terrible across all three tournaments he participated in, which was pretty concerning since this year he had 645 points total to defend across Indian Wells and Miami. But now, things were different. This was not the same Kasper Ruud that had just lost to the number 125 player in the world. He was better now. Kasper was on a mission to show the world he would not lose in the second round of Indian Wells or Miami. Instead, he lost in the third round of both tournaments. After the Sunshine Double was over, Kasper Ruud would end up losing 555 points, dropping him down to fifth. The Norwegian now sat at a dismal record of 4-5 in 2023. But fear not, Rude fans, because here come the ATP 250 clay tournaments. Struggling to win matches in those high-level competitions like Grand Slams or Masters events? No worries. Just come on down to Portugal where you can beat up on a bunch of challenger-level players and pick up a free couple hundred points. Now, Rude is no stranger to the strategy, as he essentially does it every year. And the Norwegian managed to win his first title of 2023 in Estoril. On his road to the trophy, Rude didn't have to face a single player in the top 30 and picked up an easy 250 points, lifting him back up into the top 4. Rude was now back on track, ready to retake the tennis world by storm and I spoke too soon. Rude lost in straight sets to world number 100 Jan Leonard Struff in the third round of Monte Carlo, yet somehow managed to go up in the rankings. Not to worry though, next up would be Barcelona, an ATP 500 tournament on clay which, considering he's coming off a title in Estoril, Casper should be a huge favorite to win. His Barca campaign started out on a strong note with a victory against Ben Shelton, who is by no means an easy opponent. Then came the second round, and I mean really Casper, You're playing in an ATP 500 on your best surface, and you're going to lose in the second round to Francisco Cherandolo, the pro tennis definition of mid in straight sets? After losing before that to a player barely inside the top 100, also on your best surface? Are these results really all the third best tennis player in the entire world has to offer? This is as good as it's gonna get? Because if so, I'll see you in the challengers, man. Berrettini has already sunk to playing challengers instead of earning deep runs at Masters events, and at this rate, Rude's gonna be next. So, needless to say, this season has been rough for Casper Rude. So far in 2023, he has gone 10-7, and 7, 
only made it past the third round of a tournament once, and has suffered several embarrassing losses to opponents ranked miles below him. Most of those losses have been the result of Rude losing to himself rather than his opponent. And since 2022 has ended, it appears as if his confidence has been completely shot. Take his loss to Botik van de Zenschulp in the Miami Masters third round. After winning the first set, Rude began hitting endless overhead errors throughout the second and third sets, undoubtedly shattering his self-belief. On top of that, Rude was also struggling when under pressure, as across the entire match he only converted 2 out of 15 break points he had. And don't even get me started on the final point. Rude is down 4-5, 30-40, hits a great approach down the line, gets an easy overhead but sends it straight back to Van de Zenschulp and misses a put away volley on the next shot. That's some third doubles high school tennis gameplay if I've ever seen it. And not only that, this is the tournament in which he had 600 points on the line. The tournament in which he needed to give his all to retain a potentially crucial amount of points. And clearly, he was unable to even come close to doing so. Despite being currently ranked number 3 in the world, Kasper Ruud has earned just the 20th most points out of any ATP player in 2023. And most of those points came for the 1-250 that he won. I said at the start of the video that 2023 was the year for Kasper Ruud to prove the doubters wrong, to prove he deserves his incredibly high ranking. But so far he's done just the opposite. With the losses at the Masters and Grand Slam events, he is proving he cannot compete at the highest level consistently. With those losses to players ranked as low as 125, he is proving that he shouldn't be ranked even close to third in the world. Even with the successful title campaign in Estero, he is still proving the doubters right, confirming their notions that he is only in the top 5 thanks to low level clay tournaments that he feasts on every year to inflate his ranking. Now let me make this clear, I don't dislike Kasper Ruud. He is one of the nicest guys on tour and displays such a high level of sportsmanship even in defeat much akin to Novak Djokovic, Carl Salkaraz, and, of course, Nick Kyrgios. And believe me, I want him to succeed as much as the next guy, because once Nadal and Djokovic are gone, we're going to need as many truly great tennis players on the tour as we can get. However, I feel as though Rude's performances at the highest level of tennis recently have been genuinely inexcusable, and have a pretty big chance of setting a dangerous precedent for the rest of the Norwegian's 2023 campaign. Especially considering he still has serious amounts of points still to defend in Rome, Roland Garros, Canada, and the US Open this year. But what do you guys think? Is this just a small rough patch for Casper and he'll get over it soon? Or do you think Rude is proving he really should be ranked much lower than he currently is? Let me know down below in the comments and until next time, I'll see you later.